folks, Captain Mike here from Hoagie Lure Company. As you can tell from these spinning rods in the foreground, chicken and pop was on the menu for today, but today it's greasy calm. There are fish here, but they're very scattered. It's funny, there's no signs of life, no whales, no birds, no bait, well, visibly, but there are fish and people are hooking up, so plan B today is trolling. So I pulled my little four rod, no outrigger spread out of the hatch. Got my conventional jigging rods that I had on tap for today, connecting four bird bars. We're gonna set out a spread and you know, catch some fish. So the approach today is really rather simple. So I'm in a spot called the dump, which is a fishing area pretty much do sell at the Martha's Vineyard. It's a fleet of boats. There's scattered tuna. I'm marking bait periodically on the fish finder. We came for jig and pop, but too scattered for that to happen. So the name of the game today is running a search pattern. I'm just running a grid. I'm going a few miles one direction, a few miles a different direction. Just sort of working a rectangular pattern outward from where I decided to start. There's boats and a fleet, so I'm sort of trying to stay out of the congestion. So I really like mixing my directional bars with the classic straight line bars. The directional bars are great because you can spread out in the spread, but what's nice about the classic bars, since they pull straight, you can tease the fish. As you can see, it's greasy calm today. There's definitely fish in the area. There's a whole fleet here, but sometimes just that surge and drop, surge and drop by cranking the reel, that surge and drop, you know, can trigger that fear of missing out, like strike response of the tuna. And, you know, we're trolling around. There's gotta be thousands of fish. And I'm always picturing, I always wonder how many fish are following the lures, but not eating them. And, you know, again, just on these greasy calm days, just that teasing, reeling in, the surge and drop, it's a great way just to trigger that FOMO, you know, strike response. And here we are, proof's in the pudding right now. So we've got this guy, little underfish, circling around the boat. Jack is gonna wait for a good headshot with this fish when it comes around. We got it right in the gill, nice shot. It's like bleeding it and gaffing it all in the same time. And, uh, and you, Great whites in the area, we'll find them. So right there, that was pretty much textbook, four rod, no outrigger spread, teasing fish on a greasy calm day. Step one is letting out the directional bars. This one is pink, so it's close to red, so a good way to cue that this is a port side bar. Port wine is red, and so we're color coded for a pinkish red. This bar is gonna, you can see this angle, it's gonna track way far out. Then we're gonna send the classic line straight right down the middle. This is the Hoagie Hybrid Rod. You can see I have my jigging wind-on leader. Just connected the bar directly to the wind-on leader. Set it and forget it. I'm just gonna let this out and see how it'll just wanna track out. We're just gonna let it out. These are floating bars, so you don't need to worry too much about them. They're self-correcting and uh, just easy plug and play. And I'm gonna get ready to put this in the holder. See the bird flipped upside, it's gonna self-correct. There it goes. And uh, you can see it's just gonna swing right out. I'm gonna let a touch more line out. The more line you let out, the further these eggs are gonna track. Put my clicker on, let it rod in. Now I'm gonna send this classic straight line. 
down the inside. See my port line is already way out there. I'm gonna send this guy out. Now these birds swim at a range of speeds. We're going a little touch on the slow side, in my opinion, on a calm day like today. But we'll address speed in just a minute once we get these out. So I only like trolling with two directional bars because they keep swimming out and out and out and out and out. So if you were to have two directionals and two directionals or so four directionals, it's a little hard to check for weed because they want to swim off to each other. So I always like just to have two. That way it's easy to check the uh, outside lines because they'll want to swim out while you're reeling in and the classics will come straight in and out. Already got weed on this one. So it's a greasy calm day today and there's lots of weeds. So the boats that are hooking up the most are the ones checking the lines the most. So we just checked this outboard line, got rid of the weeds, sending it back. Last but not least, our second inside straight line classic. Here we go, fish on. Nice, nice. I'm gonna get Jeff on the rod here and uh, help clear some lines. Here you go, big guy. So, that was pretty cool. That doesn't always happen when you're doing a tutorial on how to let a spread to hook a fish, but we'll take it. release this fish. I'm just going to comment on a couple things. One, it looks like a Mako got this guy. So hopefully he's going to make it. See that bite bite mark? But we're just going to take the D hooker here. I have the shank and hook. What I'm going to do is like lift the hook and push the line down. Boom, off it goes. There's a method to my madness for how much I've let out. Now what hopefully you can see in the drone footage here is I've created sort of a W formation in the spread. And so the bars are each at different intervals out. So of course the two directional bars, they're way out. And those are the tips of the W, if you will. So I got one out, a high point, low point, and another high point. So there's just a lot of different points of entry in the spread. The boat serves as an attractor of sorts for tuna. It's greasy calm and uh, I like to think the boat maybe looks like either a dragger, discarding fish, or a whale, who knows what, but it's an attractor. And so I want to have something to intercept the tuna wherever they might enter the, the whitewash behind the boat. So again, W formation, nice spread, even out, way to go. Holy cow, folks! We got three on. Trying to get four just because. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna call it with three. Yeah, we had four hits, three fish. So what happened there was we went through like a group of birds sitting, and one thing I've noticed when you go through birds that are sitting and they don't get out of your way that easily, we call it that the fu factor. They get little indignant with you going through them. That means they're really focused on something. I saw that, I surged the boat, boom, boom, boom. And the reason why I surged the boat was to trigger that FOMO reaction strike. And here we are. So now, unfortunately, we're down to two for four. At four hits, three on, we dropped one. Now we've cleared one line. The bird bars float. So Jack just put the 
third bird bar in the T-top just to get it out of our way to clear the line. We've taken the boat out of gear just to get some lining quickly. Once we get close, we'll start working the throttle again. May not be a jig and pop day, but certainly lots of bent rods. You can't go wrong with that. So we're gonna keep in communication. We've got two fish on. So my friend Jeff is bringing one in. Judging by the angle of his line, his is closer than mine. And so he's gonna communicate when he has color. So now I'm just gonna put the boat in gear briefly. We're getting close. The line's getting a little slack, so we're just gonna assist the tight line with the engines in idle. So I'm fighting a fish and running the boat. We got Dante on the camera, Jack on the GoPro slash gaff. And it looks like Jeff's is gonna be in first. So I'm just gonna keep pressure on my fish and we're gonna focus on landing Jeff's. I got keep stepping back, Jeff. Because it's a spreader bar with a long yeah. flank line, you're gonna like create space for Jack by walking backward. Okay, that fish is gonna come in now. My fish is coming in shortly thereafter. We have our limit, so we're gonna release this guy. We're gonna focus on a healthy release. So I'm swimming this fish alongside the boat just to make sure he's fully revived. I have our D hooker here. And so three, two, one. I have the shank of the hook, bend, pop, off it goes. So as far as outfits today, obviously we're not gonna be talking about our jig and pop outfits. Uh, so much as our conventional jigging outfits that we're repurposing for bird bars. Now, in my hatch, whenever I go offshore, I keep my no outrigger spread in a hatch. So when we get situations like today, I'm ready to rock and roll. And so I keep these shorter conventional outfits. I always have four outfits stowed in the head or in the center console of my boat short so they can stow away and not create a lot of space and so today it's flat calm flat ass calm and you know so it's trolling and so i can't tell you how many miles i get out of this outfit this is the hoagie hybrid rod with my avid lx6 uh, two-speed outfit i jig i troll um, i don't cast with this outfit but that's about the only thing i don't do inshore offshore and so the thing about this outfit is i have uh 80 pound test braid and today I had a uh, jigging wind on leader which is a 30 foot leader of 80 pound test fluoro and uh, I just popped on these uh, bird bars and uh, you know in the no outrigger spread you had two directional bars and two classic bars and the, the directional bars I have the pinkish red which is going to be the port side that's going to go off to the port and the green uh, which is color coded for the starboard side just like your running lights and these bars will track out and then i've got the classic straight running bars here on the inside lines and so we have a little four rod spread we're spread out nice and we can cover some ground and just nice light tackle outfits today the fish were smaller i'm going to call them 40 inch class fish 40 to 50 inch class fish and uh, just simple spreads now you can see on this bird bar it's got the second wing on the belly and that directional component is what's going to cause it to swim outboard from wherever you're trolling again so which side you have these on matters quite a bit our birds uh, tend to float or they do float i should say and they're self-correcting so if you put them in the wrong way they're just going to right themselves and go out classic bars just go right down the middle and boom there you are four, four rod spread I'm right in the game, half dozen fish today. It's new time, heading for the barn. And uh, great thing that we had, just a simple bag like this in the hatch and turned out to be a fantastic day. Lots of smiles, lots of bent rods.